Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Welcome one and all to the Dukes of Gaming podcast. Thank you for choosing to hang with us for the next hour and some change as we bring you into our world of video games. Of course, I'm your host. I rap, I make beats, and I watch anime because I am your Duke of Anime, Thomas, and it's good to be here for another week. And of course, joining me first and foremost, he is a Nintendo hater that plays all of his games on the hardest mode. He is our Duke of Education, Alfredo. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing great. Great, actually. It's been my first week on vacation. Don't have Drake. to worry about work, just okay. playing games. But I do have to put a little bit of an asterisk on what you said. I don't always play on the hardest mode, but I do always play on a hard mode. So never normal mode. It's got to be like at least one up, maybe two if I'm feeling a little little frisky. He's a showstopper, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, yep. He's a showstopper. That's what I do. But... Speaking of the games we've been playing, I guess we can always start with the age old gamer question, which, of course, is what have we been playing this week? And I'll go first. I have a lot of games I've been playing this week. Obviously, I mentioned that I received my Steam Deck and everything. So experimenting with that has been just a game in and of itself. Right, right. So I could go on all day. (laughs) I can go on all day, but this is not the form. This is not the setting. I'll go over two games I've been, or three games, I'm sorry, that I've been playing on Steam Deck and one game I'm playing on PC and Steam Deck combined. Nice. First off, um, I'm going to start with a game that I thought I was going to enjoy a lot and I didn't enjoy oh, as much no. as I thought I was going to, which is the original God of War um, 20, 2005, actually. And I love this game as a kid. Like mm-hmm. I played this game, but it was before I really looked at games as art. Oh no, it's before you were critical to games. Before there we, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, now, before, I remember this game. You said being, all games were great, right? Were exactly. I was playing like, and truth be told, as a young kid, going back through my old catalog. I played a lot of crappy games. <laughs> we all have. Don't be ashamed. I, I, I feel a little ashamed. Don't, I, there, don't be. I, I don't want to bring this. I want to give this game a, a lot of talk. Not God of War, but I was playing this Yu-Gi-Oh game that I loved as a kid. I downloaded What was that. it on? PS2. Was it Duel of the Roses? It was Duel of the Roses. <laughs> I played that game too. <laughs> I Never love that game. As a, I finished it I as did a too. Kid. I it was hard. Game. It that was a very hard game. game. That game is horrible. Like, I was playing, I, I was playing it. on Steam Deck and I was like, man, this is horrible. <laughs> I don't know but, how I got through this. But you were able to play it on Steam Deck. That's amazing. I feel like that would be a good portable game. Yeah. But apparently I'm wrong. Well, it doesn't speak to me. Maybe somebody else might look at it. It's a cool concept. Mm-hmm. But just to get back to God of War, because I, right. yeah, I, I don't recommend Duel of the Roses. I do recommend that anybody who is currently playing through God of War, the Norse mythology series, I recommend you go back and play some of these. And that's 2018's version, right? The reboot yeah, from 2018 okay. on to Ragnarok is right. the Norse mythology series. Okay. But when he's back in Greece and his rise to become the God of War, I think is very cool. I don't think it holds up 100%. Just from the standpoint of like, one of my favorite games of all time is God of War 3. Mm-hmm. And that's the pinnacle of this combat. And it still holds up? Or have you not touched that? You're making no, your way I actually No, I touched that game. I played okay. that maybe two years ago on pl- PlayStation 4. Because they had a remastered okay. version of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. So it's really got solid. Updated. Runs nice. at 60 frames per second. Looks really good. God of War 2005 is them on their way to that so it doesn't feel as epic it feels a little more dated Mm -hmm. and i feel like back then gauge like games when they had like a god of war 2 god of war 3 like there's a sizable difference yes definitely because we were a lot more than now yeah we still had that hardware huge jump you know the graphical not only the graphical fidelity but like the actual mechanics they were just way bigger leaps in improvement back then. Like there are games now that get sequels. I'm like, I prefer the original. Yeah, definitely. Like back then it was a little like different. 
Mm-hmm. And so God of War 2, I feel, is way better than God of War 1. And then God of War 3 is the best of them all. And then I feel a lot of people, you know, think that God of War 2018 is the best of them all now. So each game kind That's of... Me. That's me. Right. And each game kind of like, you know... Evolved. Evolves. It evolves. It's a, re- it's a series of evolution. I respect that about God of War. This is obviously God of War in the Caterpillar stage. <laughs> before right. it was able to spread its wings and fly. Exactly. So I recommend it just as like a history lesson of sorts. Okay. You know? I feel like it's one of those. I feel like God of War has definitely stood the test of time in terms of it's one of like you can't tell the story of video games without talking about God of War. And that's so sad because I see I was ready to tear you apart, Thomas. I was like, God of War is terrible. And then I was like, oh, wait, I've only played 2018. <laughs> so maybe so what so what you're saying is that, you you know, you're somebody who loves or used to like this game. And, you know, the red, red rose tinted glasses of nostalgia kind of got ripped off of you for bit. someone who has not played it like myself and but is a fan of 2018 would you at least recommend that those people go back and play it or is it not worth it i recommend you go back and play it because a lot of the things that god of war 2018 does well you can see like the base idea okay. of where it came from and i'm like for me for example as a player i love it when i see a developer's older game Mm -hmm. And you see some of the concepts that they were playing around with that they eventually mastered in future games. And so I think it's worth it from that standpoint. Okay. If you are trying to experience, like, I want a great 10-hour experience, wall-to-wall action, great combat. It's going to give you that, but in way more of like a beat-em-up kind of way. I got you. Okay. Well, God of War 2018 is, it leans more to, and it's not The Last of Us, but it leans more into that type of narrative. Okay. Like, there's a big difference in how the game is narratively structured. Right, right. So that's a okay, big that's difference fair. to me. But I recommend it, though. I think it's a great game. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm Well, I might have to play it. Maybe I won't play it, like you said, on my PlayStation or anything like that. But if I do have a Steam Deck to make it convenient to play, maybe I'll go ahead and play it. That's the other thing. I never played these games portably. So that does like kind of add to the experience for sure. Right. I'm sure. And that's where I get to my next game I've been playing, which I have the exact opposite view of. No. I'm playing Portal. Okay. And now I played Can't go wrong with Portal. I'm learn- I've learned Uh-oh. that. So okay, <laughs> I so didn't like that face you gave me. <laughs> I played Portal Two a while ago. I never beat it, but I played it. So I, I was like, I get it. I think this is a cool concept. Mm-hmm. I can definitely side with people saying, "Oh, this is one of the greatest games of all time," because I see it. I see why, but I never went actually through it. Okay. Because like, I don't feel like spending twelve hours doing this. I'm not a puzzle that's game fair. guy. I don't like puzzle that's games. What at all. Was, that was my question. Do no, you, you like, like puzzles in the first place? I literally hate puzzle games. Okay. This is the one so, genre that I can literally say I hate. So what on earth prompted you to even consider, hey, I'm going to play Portal this Portal game when I don't even like puzzle games? So I like it when a game transcends the, like, the genre it's in. One of my favorite examples is like Metroid Prime, where okay. Metroid Prime is... This it's a Metroid game and it has all the same principles of a Metroid game, except it's not 2D, it's 3D. Right. But it's still, you can see like how it's still Metroid. I feel like Portal is a puzzle game, but it's in the mask of a first person shooter. Hmm. Okay, I can and, see. I can see. And that. because it's a first person shooter in that time getting through this world, and just the idea of okay the portal you get two sides of it and you have to figure out which one and you have to consider momentum as well so how you jump into the portal affects how you like land on a specific object it's i like that like that kind of puzzle solving i like i don't like uncharted i gotta figure out like this puzzle gotta move the box over to yeah this i don't like title. that <laughs> like but i'm actively taking part in this and i have to consider my momentum i have to consider all this. like that's right up my alley okay that's fair that's and so fair. playing through and so playing through this it's three hours so it's not even a big time investment i was playing in line at the missions place you know like it's like i've always been hesitant to play portal because i'm like i don't want to sit at my computer i don't want to sit at my tv mm-hmm. for hours playing this Okay. 
But taking it on the go, like I didn't even put, put this on the TV. Like I, I play this just on the Steam Deck portably, and it's it's an amazing experience. Like it's gonna be honestly one of my favorite games of all time. And I like something I just played this week, never touched before. Like this, like Portal One is incredible. And I I think what you hit like the what's the term the nail on the head there because. I do feel like with puzzles, especially for someone who you don't like puzzle games in general, to sit down, make the time commitment to do it. If you get frustrated with a particular puzzle, it's so easy to be like, okay, I'll put it down, maybe not pick it up. But if you get frustrated with the puzzle on something that's mobile, you can put it down for a second and then pick it up so easily because you can just stop and then pick it up. Your exact spot is saved. You don't have to turn on the console, all of those extra steps. Right. It's just so much less frustrating and i didn't even consider that because it does seem like portability would be a puzzle games like would only enhance a puzzle game for sure like it i never thought i'd finish portal and i finished it in three days there you go now you I gotta finished, go for i did portal it, i did most of it in one sitting and then the last the last two levels are significantly harder than the rest yeah. of the game yeah and so are. i put it down for a second i was like all right i'll come back to it in a couple of days came back to it beat that in one sitting one of my favorite games i've played period it's a lot of people like, now I, you I get only have now. to do you got to go do portal 2 and then it's you on the steam do deck it's on the steam deck 2. already downloaded well the hard part will be well not hard part but the the test to see if you're actually dedicated is if you do portal 2 co-op that's where it gets that's a that's a commitment right i gotta there. find a partner you gotta find out i'll play i'll play it with you it's hard it that's is compelling. hard because that's instead compelling. of just two portals though now you got four so that's even harder no, that's compelling. I gotta say, I I will take you up on your offer if we can yeah. if we can figure out how it work. Um, if you, you go on Steam, easy to Steam Deck. Yeah, yeah, I got it. it. If I don't, I will buy it. We'll Let's figure it, it out. Because I I'm in love now. Like I'm in love with this series. I I'm gonna beat Portal Two before the end of the year. Amazing game. Uh, we talk about making, it more, but you you're know. making me want to go back to Portal. Now I'm probably gonna <laughs> download it again and play Let's it. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. I'm excited. And then I'm, I've been playing another game, which is in the description, but I will let you take that away when you want to talk about it. So Sounds that's good. what I've been playing this week. Alfredo, what have you been playing this week, good sir? I've been playing. So I went back and played. I talked about this game already that I played. Uh, I've been playing two games. First one I've been playing is Immortality. And I talked about this game before, about my initial impressions and everything that was when i was like maybe three two three hours into this game we felt the I, same way about it I feel we like. did we did we talked about how we both really liked it i made the argument that this is basically a theater kids best video game ever essentially where it, it's just you going behind the scenes of this camera work that's involved what's involved in the actors uh lives of what's involved in the actual films that they're making is basically a found footage type of game where you're just trying to put together literally the film slices as to what exactly is the film about why they are aren't released all of that um but yeah you're basically trying to solve a mystery as for what's happening to the lead actress particularly um, and what's her deal essentially. And is it, we, we really liked it. Now I have played much more of this game now because I have been trying to row credits for it and actually finish the game, get some sort of ending. So initially I only had two, three hours. Now I probably have had around seven or eight. The problem is that this game was supposed to only take five hours to beat that's how long it's like documented to beat completionist run i think is like nine or ten hours so i'm teetering toward the completionist and i feel like i've seen like so so many different revisions of like new scenes all of that i'm i am finding things but the problem is that i am hitting diminishing returns i am trying to finish this game the plot is intriguing Ever, the new material that I am finding is intriguing as well, but it's not so intriguing that I want to no longer want to spend the additional three, four hours scrubbing this different footage, rewatching all of these scenes that I've already seen for like one new surprise, for one new challenge in there. So it's 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 really complicated because i really do like this game i loved it when i first start but i don't think i don't know i feel like they they still need to master 
not wasting the player's time. Because on one Spectrum, Mm -hmm. you could, like, if you had click on all the right things, do look at all the right scenes, do everything perfectly, you could get done in, like, three, four hours. But on the other end, you might have an experience like I'm having where you find all the interesting stuff and then eight hours later, you're still trying to at least roll credits, even though you feel like you've seen everything or almost everything that the game has to offer it. And, you know, at this point, I would consider myself to be finished immortality. I piece to I piece together all of the different stories for myself. I have a really solid understanding of what's happening. And, you know, I, I feel good finally stepping away from the game. But there's just this nagging feeling that, oh, God, why couldn't I actually roll credits on this? Do, uh, do you think that maybe you're not playing? I'm not saying as a diss or anything, but do you think you're not playing it as the developers intended? And maybe that's why you haven't rolled credits? Yeah, well, that's another argument to be made, right? Because the thing is, these types of games uh, uh, don't have solid instructions on how mm-hmm. they're supposed to be played, really. So there, this isn't the first developer game I've played. So this developer has also made other found footage games, like Her Story, I think is one of them, like Madden the Chat is mentioning. There's also Telling Lies that I have played, and I rolled credits on that. Finished that one in like an hour, an hour and 30 minutes had the opposite experience where I finished it super quickly, did not understand anything of it. Um, but this one's the total opposite where I I'm understanding like everything. I just cannot actually roll credits on it. But like I said, they don't have a set of instructions for, Oh, you should play it like this. They have little recommendations for, Oh yeah, you can play it like this. You can rewind, you can fast forward, do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it's just hard to gauge. It's, because there is no true tutorial and you just have to figure it out essentially. So at this point, I don't know if I would recommend it to people who don't like art because this is a very, very art game. This is like an experience. Like if you went to the museum and if you went to the museum for like two, two hours, right? That's a great experience. A lot of people like that. But now what if you were stuck in the museum for like 10 hours and you're looking at the same art pieces. It's not very big. The museum itself isn't very big. That's kind of how I'm feeling right now when it comes to this game, where I appreciate everything that it has to offer. I'm still finding things in the art to appreciate and all of that, but I'm ready to leave the museum. You know, I got to go home. I got to feed my dog, all of that uh, information. But yeah, like Matt's saying, there are a lot of secrets in the game. I have found, no spoilers, but I have found pretty much all of the spookums from what I've seen. It's just literally rolling credits. But uh, yeah. Oh, also, this game is definitely an adult game. Cannot stress that enough. (laughs) This is a super mature game. So if you don't like uh, super mature games or, you know, nudity in particular in your game, not might, might not be for you. If you like nudity, I have a game for you. It's this one, Immortality. <laughs> I still argue, like, is this a game or an interactive experience? I think it's the latter. I I agree. I think it I think it's art. I think it's it's not it's not a game. I don't know. It's like, an I think it being on on um on Xbox Game Pass is kind of a disservice to it. Well, a lot of people the good thing is that a lot of people get their hands on it, right? I don't well, yeah, know. If not, you not from that perspective. Uh, yeah, not from that perspective. I, yeah, I do agree with you. I like the exposure it's getting for Xbox Game Pass. Oh yeah, for sure. I think it belongs on like an HBO Max or a Netflix. I oh, it would do really, really good, I feel like, on a Netflix like their mobile service. I feel yeah, like right. that might be a good medium for this. Like this is Definitely. this is the stuff I think Netflix should invest in. Yes. Definitely. I feel like it fit in more. Ooh, we have a disagreement in the chat. Uh, Matt, friend of the show, disagrees, says you have to use your brain to parse in information, troubleshooting, all of that, which is involved in gaming. Yeah, but then also, well, I guess it is a little different from something like Bandersnatch on Netflix, which you just literally make a choice. This but does I mean, involve but, scrubbing, but I, I disagree with that because Bandersnatch, even though you're making a choice, that's still technically you're using your brain to parse information. It's just a lot less information. Hmm. It's 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 a fine line to walk, and we could talk about it all day. Right. But I think because if you I'd say Bandersnatch in that case wouldn't be would be considered a game too. It's right. just a very yeah. it's a way more simplistic game, but mm-hmm. it's a game nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, that's a deep conversation. I'd love to have it. Thanks for the Definitely. comment, Matt. 
Yeah. Um, we yeah. will definitely talk more about that. But I think we need to talk about the game we're both ta- uh, playing now, which is Cyberpunk 2077. You, you want to talk about a mature game. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because uh, Immortality is pretty mature. But so let's get into it, because right now I've only played about I'm playing this game on PlayStation Trials. So I'm in within the five hour trial, and I think I'm like within the fourth hour. Seen a lot of the game so far, though. Have access to pretty much everything. Can go anywhere, from what I understand. Doing all the side missions, customized characters, everything. So I waited to play this game. And I was talking about Thomas while we were streaming Cyberpunk yesterday on the Steam Deck. And I wanted to wait to play this game until just now. One, because of FOMO. Because everyone is playing this game. Because I watched the, uh, what is it, Netflix Night Runner series. And I was like, oh, maybe I should play Cyberpunk. So I started playing it. And so that's the first reason. Second reason is I wanted to wait till they got all the bugs worked out. I didn't want to have the glitchy experience that everybody else was talking about. And honestly, I felt like I could wait because once they once they did say, oh, we're going to wait. Uh, or we, we won't have a third person available in this game at all that kind of took all the wind out of, out of the sails for me because i typically don't like first person shooter type games just first person games in general like, I like how, wait how i hate puzzle games you hate first person shooters yeah exactly wow exactly. wow yeah but We're polar opposite people <laughs> but like you i gave this game a chance i and i have to previous ones like i played what do sex mankind divided all those games i played them and it's i a enjoyed them. Shooter, though. They're fine. It, it is it is but it's very similar because you can spec your character mm-hmm. play it your way and the right. game, the type that i like to play these games are is basically as a stealth game so i always invest in espionage stealth tactics all of that hacking that's what i'm doing in cyberpunk and so far i will say so far so good i am enjoying the game I do think that it has a lot that I had hoped was involved in the game. Um, Like the gunplay isn't the tightest. The gunplay isn't exactly how I wanted. The melee weapons also, like the swords. Thomas knows exactly what I'm talking about. The swords. Alfredo is a hater of the one of the greatest swords in an open world RPG ever. The swords need work. There's not much variety from what I've seen in what you're able to do with the weapons that they do give you. Alfredo, describe huh? 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 Alfredo, describe what you want the swords to do. I want you to say what you said on stream. And of course, you can listen to our streams every Saturday. We stream live on Twitch. You can hear some Alfredo's nonsense. Tell them what. Tell (laughs) them what. This is a completely (laughs) legit explanation. Okay, let me set the scene just a little. So you're in a cyberpunk world, right? Very cyberpunk. You're supposed to not be able to do everything, but, you know, coolness. Coolness is literally a skill tree that you can invest in in this game, right? It, it, Cyberpunk is all about the cool. Now, when you get a, something like a sword, for example, you can slice and dice your way through enemies, right? That's expected. But where is the cyberpunk flair? Why can't you deflect bullets with your sword? Why isn't that an option on the skill tree? That's all I'm saying. That's just uh, something that I would expect out of this game that they don't allow you to do. That's just one example. But so you I want feel your like that's reasonable. the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, we already have Keanu Reeves sitting here. Like, w- w- you want to add another thing from the Matrix? Okay, but you can't pretend that like this is a crazy expectation, considering people literally go invisible in this game and travel at supersonic speeds. This is not a, a huge request. Okay? I think it's a crazy expectation. It for is not. You to let the game. It maybe from a lore. Maybe from a lore perspective, maybe. But oh from a God. game perspective, you want them to add a whole other thing, and they lose points that is, if they don't add this thing. That is not. I'm just saying this is one example, Thomas. You know, it's something I would expect in this world to be at least an option, and isn't. That's all I'm saying. It's just the fact. I, I can. I could ride with you if you're saying I wish this was in the game. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I wish it was in the game too. Yeah. But you're not saying. <laughs> you're saying this should have been in the game and i'm docking points since it's not in the game I feel like those are two separate things <laughs> i feel like they're almost the same <laughs> close enough but you're oh, right Lord. you're right i am leaning toward the latter but all that said i do think so far so good 
I, now, when this game ends, when the trial is over for me, I do think I'm going to play it. It's not a reduced price right now, $30, and I think it's worth it so far from what I'm seeing. I am more curious, though, as to the actual story of this game. I'm not so much, you know, tied into the mechanics and, like, mm -hmm. the combat in this game as I am the actual story and lore. Because so far, the story is actually really good. The lore, though, the lore is what takes this to this game to infinity because the the world itself, so cool. The characters, they're they're pretty co okay. I like them so far, but I, I haven't the characters had... characters are good in this game. Like, I, well, I haven't had as much attachment and time with them as you have. So right, right. I'm what, saying, what are you thinking? I think the characters in this... I think the characters in this game are good. They're not like my favorite party members I've ever played in an RPG, far from it. But I feel like the tales of this game, it, this game's like inadequacies are a little overstated. It had a okay. horrible launch. That is on the publishers. Yep. Not the developers, because the developers can only do what the pu publishers kind of I don't know if we can let the publishers off the hook that much, but I no, I'm saying the publishers are the reason I, I feel of why, why oh. this, the situation it's in. Okay. I'm not blaming the developers, the exact developers who are working night and day trying to get this game out and didn't develop. Uh, those aren't Ricochet the decision makers okay. who like who are saying like we need to spend certain like right, I blame right. the higher ups of why that happened. I got you. The developers needed more time to flesh this game out. Yeah. And they got it. Two after years more release. time. Yeah, after right. release. <laughs> but they got it. And mm -hmm. I I loved the game in 2020. It was my most anticipated game of the year of that of 2020. And I I guess it didn't meet that. Right. It was my favorite game of the year. But I had a really good time with it. And seeing it in its best form now is heartwarming. Because I didn't have the greatest time in terms of bugs. Like I had the game cut off on me every hour and a half. Dang. You know, Dang. So, and I'm playing on PS5. I'm not even playing on last gen consoles. So it was very disheartening to have that happen multiple times. So playing it now on PC where there's no issues and it looks incredible. You know, it's just amazing to just behold this game sometimes. <laughs> like it's it's incredible that the game holds like it looks as good as the game's release, like since it's been released on mm -hmm. PC. And now on consoles, at least on next gen consoles, it's on that end as well, where it's one of the best looking games you can probably buy. Yeah, I agree. This Technically looks phenomenal. impressive in every aspect to me mm -hmm. now. Right, right. Not not then. But what's crazy, though, is like how you back in 2020 were playing this same exact game. And I mean, obviously, a whole bunch of improvements since then, right? But like the fact that you've gotten it cut off on you when you were originally played it, and you were still like, wow, this game is this game is great. That's I think it's special, man. I think it's a really I'm special cool. game. It's um, it's not perfect. It's one of the most imperfect great games I've ever played. Hmm. It's because well, Skyrim yeah. was similar, but Skyrim it somehow was not as buggy as this. <laughs> <laughs> like, this game is definitely probably the most buggy game I've ever played. But I had right. a great time playing it. I recommend it to anybody, especially now. Watch the anime as well. The yes. anime has... That honestly sparked me wanting to start a new playthrough. Definitely. And also, and also Steam Deck. It's recommended on Steam Deck as well. It's a great game portably if you um kind of scale back your expectations of it's not going to be this 4k thing it's going to be the 720 thing that runs at 30. yeah but really that cool. in and of itself is portable that's amazing just that you can do that and it looks it looks okay it looks good enough for sure so i i highly recommend it it's pretty much on everything but switch so <laughs> you can find it on everything except for a nintendo console right now right <laughs> Makes sense. Maybe one day to cloud it will come, but we'll see. Maybe one day to cloud, but it is on PC, Alfredo. And on PC is is the highest it's the highest it's been in terms of sales, and it passed one million daily players as Insane. well. It's it's had a crazy week. It started with the anime releasing, and mm -hmm. I will say. If the anime was really, or if it was even just average, I feel like it wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, 
Because that's <laughs> remember yeah. Resident Evil. Remember Resident Evil had that um live action show come out. They did. They did. That thing gained not one player. Well, the thing is, it's a little bit different though because with Resident Evil, you know, Resident Evil is a very uh, <laughs> it's it was never on the hype level. Gamers know what Resident Evil is, right? But everyone knows what Cyberpunk 2077 is. Afraid, are you, are you telling me if that Resident Evil show was not like some super cool, like <laughs> Sandman, like all, name your Netflix show, if it wasn't like oh, that, if it was that tier, you're saying it wouldn't have done anything to this? Like, I, don't, I, feel like, I honestly don't think so. Because it's not, because here's the thing. The games that have done this are open world games that promise to do so much and either sometimes deliver or don't deliver at all. So we've had things like this happen before. And realistically, or not not even coincidentally, it's been with another CD Projekt Red game, mm -hmm. aka The Witcher 3. They followed the same exact yeah. formula here, which is really smart, where they had Witcher 3. It, it was an actual great game that everyone loved. It came out. It did great numbers. But then they developed, you know, The Witcher show on Netflix, and then it came out again and did gangbuster numbers again. Bet right. Pretty much better than it even came out the first time because people got nostalgic for it. And also, it the show was good. The show was good and the world the world itself was what people were really into. So they wanted a way to be in that world, experience more of it, aka right. go to the great game. They did the same thing here, but they did it with a No Man's Sky twist where clearly, you know, Cyberpunk 2077 when it came out, it had a lot of work to do. And like we said before, they were able to pull that off. So now timing their all of their updates and their last update alongside their Netflix anime series of having an awesome world that people want to live in themselves and having a game that allows them to do that. I think that is what allows them, allows this to be such a success. The game. With Resident Evil... I don't know about you, but I don't really care for the Resident Evil world, right? It's just another zombie world to me. And there's nothing special about that world, per se, that makes me mm -hmm. want to be like, oh, I want to play Resident Evil. I want to be in that world. Because it's, ju it's just yeah. another shooter. That, no, that's fair. Shooter. No, that's definitely fair. Um, I think it's really telling that CD Projekt Red made the witcher the live action and cyberpunk the anime because mm -hmm. one was going to be significantly more expensive than the other yeah one. and yep. so i think they made the right decision there they Do are you think they right? were using it as a test though no like let's I think start this with the always, anime i feel like this is i they might do a live action cyberpunk at some point I but feel I, like I, they doubt will. It. I, I think I, they will i would, the success i don't i feel like it's easier to mess that up live action I do, but I think that the potential like franchisement and like the potential pros are higher than the cons at this point because they have stated that oh we're not done after this happened we're not they CD Projekt Red and has come out and said we're not done with the world of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Now they also said that we're not done with it, but we're not planning any sequels or anything like that because we're going to go back to The Witcher and make those games next. I think that leads very... me to believe, you know, might be a TV show in the future or something that they I think. Invest in. Look, obviously, I'm not informed about what they're doing, what they're not doing, but I think what their plan might be, they might be looking at Rockstar, and they might be thinking, how do we get to that level? And they have these two franchises. One's The Witcher, one's Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. I think Cyberpunk could potentially be like, a, at some point, maybe an open world GTA Online type experience. Who, that would be amazing, honestly. Because Every, everyone would sign up for that. Everyone would want to play something like that. I think they have that in their back pocket. I think if they ever do a sequel to Cyberpunk 2077, it would be that. Oh God, that could go either so amazing or so wrong. And when, I could see and it when being will a we get it? When will we get it? Ooh. PS8. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know who knows? Who knows when? And Matt's right. They um they did establish the anime back in 2020. They, they actually did. had that press conference, which I can't remember the last time a single game had a press conference. The hype was too strong. It was insane. I, I that honestly. Yeah. We it was doomed to fail on arrival because of that. I that jinxed it. I'd never seen you that in my so? life. 
<laughs> I have never. Have you seen a game have its own press the conference? Only, the only one I can think of is that abandoned game that people have been hyped for. Remember that well, that's great is company. Possibly a Kojima <laughs> game. That game, I think. <laughs> that that's great company. <laughs> right, right. Good t- good sign, right? Uh, I do want to point out real quick that also this game, Cyberpunk, is doing way better than it did when it first released. Because uh the it peaked at like eight hundred thousand players basically, and now it's hitting one million players consecutively every single day. So yeah, just just them sticking to that Witcher formula of okay, the hype has died down. Let's release something, and then you know every people are back on it. So it'll be interesting to see how they ride this train further out, seeing how they can extend the uh, the lifetime of Cyberpunk. But if it is what you're saying, Thomas, and they are planning like some sort of live service multiplayer GTA you're not, online, you're not doing that with The Oof. Witcher. Yeah, and I don't think you can either. I wouldn't want to. I don't want yeah. them to do that. I want that yeah. to be the one they always do as the RPG. And then, if you're gonna do a sequel to Cyberpunk, you probably should just make it like GTA Online. Yeah, I so I can see that. That would be what I think they're gonna do. That that's what would make sense to me. But obviously, mm-hmm. I don't work there, so I could see them definitely doing some sort of expansion pack DLC situation or standalone spinoff, something like that for cyberpunk and then also doing and then like but for the next big game doing what you're saying well i think they said they're gonna have two expansions right oh did they i have not heard i know that we definitely are guaranteed the one the phantom something yes but i don't i think i'm just thinking of the because the witcher had two really big ones so you just sparked my memory because you you're completely right they announced that expansion phantom something Liberty. liberty liberty But they also did come out and say this will be the only expansion pack. We're not right. doing okay. a second one. So fair enough. Can't wait to see how they follow up that expansion pack, though. That will be real exciting. It does seem very exciting, Alfredo. But there are a lot of things in the world of video games that seem exciting, like EA and Marvel potentially coming together and releasing an Iron Man game, which. Ooh. I've heard that before. We've had, we sure have. <laughs> we've had a very wide spectrum of Iron Man games. Yeah, including our favorite one, Anthem. Everyone's favorite uh, Iron Man yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about hype. Another game with insane hype levels. And I feel like that game up. did not warrant. I, I get why it got the hype. And I was a little hyped because obviously it was Bioware. But yeah, that's why. We didn't really see anything about that game. I mean, we, we just saw we the flying. See- we saw the yeah. flying and we were like, ooh. Exactly. But there was nothing else. Look, and that's all it took, Thomas, because, you know, that was back in a time where we had E3, right? Everyone was watching E3. All Everyone was at the same place. Anthem was the, you know, we have one final thing for you. And it's this amazing, they showcased these amazing graphics back then. I forgot what, to, like if it was 20, what, 14-ish? 2015, somewhere around there where they first showed the trailer and you were flying around in literally an Iron Man suit and then your friends come to join you and you guys can go anywhere. That was the dream that they sold us and unfortunately, unfortunately couldn't like, couldn't not pull it. It did look good. It did look good from that standpoint. It, it just didn't deliver, but hopefully this Iron Man game is in better hands. Even though by, even though by where you think that's good hands, but Ooh. This game is being developed by the Scar Wars Squadron team. And I think that's honestly a perfect fit for an Iron Man game. Do you? From the standpoint of Iron Man is a man who is inside a suit. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a first person view for him. Right. In terms of, you know, how he's viewing everything. And then Star Wars Squadrons takes place. You like flying first person in a ship. It does, but they have already stated that this will be not only a single-player game, which is different, well, kind of different from Squadrons because they have that multiplayer component, but it's going to be third-person and action-adventure-focused. So it's a little different, but... I'm not saying the whole game's going to take place within the suit, but I think that they have done really good with, like... They might have, like, a first-person view in terms of your... Like, when you are, like doing your internals kind of like how iron man has it 
Okay. That could be cool. That'd be cool. But as we just stated, I love me a third person. So the more you can keep me away from that and just in the Iron Man suit, Mm -hmm. give me that anthem experience that was promised to us that we didn't get. Give me that and I'm in. Now, do I think that they can do that? Because they said, okay, we're making a triple A Iron Man game. This is this is the studio that brought us what squadrons, right? Mm-hmm. That game I didn't play personally. I know you did, Thomas, right? Yeah, a little bit. And how how it. was it? Because I think it was like kind of lukewarm reception, where it was okay, but it didn't blow anyone's it, uh, pants off, right? I liked it, and I feel like it reviewed well. Okay, yeah, I think I, I think maybe people I need to play it. it again then. Because you know, the I, only... I play and I played it. Um, I played it on Xbox, and I also played it in VR. Okay. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. It got an eighty-three. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. That's better okay, than no. I it got an eighty. I'm sorry. It got an eighty on Metacritic. Still pretty good. Yeah, so like, that... it, it definitely was not a bad. I had a good time with. it. I didn't see it all the way through, mm-hmm. but I had a good time with it. Now, now I am a Star Wars shill, so yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I almost shouldn't <laughs> count. But I had a good time with it. I think that it's worth trying out for sure. Okay, well, besides this game, the only other game that we know that this particular studio, which is EA Motive, I think is the yeah. studio that's working behind it, they're working on the Dead Space remake. So very different game. So they're still developing that game, which is supposed to come out in at the end of January. So this studio is doing some very interesting things because as we both know, the Callisto Protocol is the direct competitor to Dead Space. And they only have about a month, eh, sort of two months in between each game. Callisto Protocol, beginning of December. Dead Space Remake, which this studio is working on, comes out end of January. Mm -hmm. Very different games that EA Motive is coming out with. They're doing a horror game. They did this Star Wars uh, space combat kind of-esque game. And now they're doing a third person action adventure game. I mean, I think they're trying to establish themselves maybe as like when EA second studio, because the first is respawn respawn is Mm -hmm. their cherished possession because that's their apex studio. And that's also who made Jedi fallen order. Right. So that's, that's probably the best EA studio. Yeah, I could agree. Dice is up there too, but dice has had a lot of controversy around all their games. You know, and then Bioware has. Oh, we don't even have to talk about Bioware. Yeah, they let so us think, down, and we don't know. I'm sure there's some other up. studios I can't think of right now, but this is an up and coming studio that made a really good game. And I feel um, Squadrons is a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. They had the Dead Space remake. We're going to see how that goes. If that goes well, that's reviews really well. And this game comes out and reviews really well. Like, I think this is a studio you really have to look out for amongst EA studios. Cause mm-hmm. I know we talk about EA being all one of the worst publishers at the same time, like EA has made some of the best games of all time. Yeah. You know, so, and that's, you can't really mince words about that. Like Matt said in the chat, um, Dragon Age is going to come out and hopefully that is yep. the return to form. Mass Effect Bioware is also needs. coming in. Well, it, it's, I, don't, I think that I think the Dragon Age is first. It is. It is. Yeah, I, I need like that Dragon Age game is gonna. I'm sorry, Dragon Age. That Dragon Age game is gonna show me where they stand. Right? Are they are are they really gonna you know come back swinging or? I want them to. I Mass Effects. I love everyone. Every Mass Effect I played, I've loved. I've loved most of the Dragon Age games. I want them to come back, but it's a show me. Yeah. Kind of they have thing. a lot to prove, honestly. <laughs> Anthem and Andromeda, like those are two games that disappointed the hell out of me. Right. Back so you have back. to earn my trust back as a consumer before I even attempt to get excited for anything you're releasing. But right. I think that this studio, Mojang, I think they have a, I'm sorry, are they Mojang or they're a motive? motive sorry, motive. Motive. Thank you. Motive, they're, they have a chance to maybe slide into that second spot behind Respawn. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, we used to talk about EA as being, like you said, kind of like the butt of the joke, but they're slowly gaining favor with these games that they're coming out with. As long as they don't, I guess, do what CD Projekt Red's publishers were doing and saying, okay, push it out now. As long as they are giving the developers time to actually, you know, gain that respect by 
putting out the best thing that they possibly can and waiting. I think that they're in a good spot. Now, the only concern, I guess, that I have is, I guess, more on the Marvel side, because for Marvel games, right, is from what we've had now is either hit or miss, kind of, because obviously we have Spider-Man, which is amazing. That is an awesome game. But then we have things like Avengers, where it just comes out and it you know for lack of it, it's not a good game it's not a good game it they've had their chance to fix it they are it oh you 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 have a <laughs> you got a question <laughs> yes thomas is when has that never been the case the hit or miss of marvel of marvel games well i think that's the problem where but i'm we saying like since say... we've been gamers i'm saying like since we've been gamers mm -hmm. when has there ever not been a hit or miss period of for marvel well, that's kind of my point, because, you know, I would have said before all of these different things have come out that, oh, this person is involved, EA is involved, there is going to be a bad game automatically. That's starting not to be true anymore, right? So we can't do that. But now Marvel is also putting their, you know, brand of awareness, I guess, for better lack of a better word, on this product. Whatever This Iron Man game is a Marvel game. It's not just a movie tie-in or whatever. But just because Marvel has that, you know, stamp of approval, their their movies used to be amazing, right? We all used to be hype about Avengers, Endgame, the next saga, all of that. And now it's kind of like, oh, Marvel's involved? Uh, I don't I don't know about this kind of. <laughs> it's how I'm kind of looking at it. Does that make know. sense? Does that make sense what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. I just disagree. But I, I, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, for me, Marvel, ever since I was a kid, I've always had good Marvel games and I've had bad Marvel games. Mm -hmm. So their stamp of approval has never really like factored in because it's all about how the developers make the game. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's a mandate for Marvel games. I don't think they're like, oh, it needs to be with the MCU. I don't I think you. that's in place. I think that they're letting the they're letting Insomniac do make their own universe for mm -hmm. Spider-Man ps4 ps5 there's letting them do what they do introducing characters you know that oh that doesn't really match what tom holland's doing but who cares this right. is a different universe um we got this wolverine game coming we don't know if that's the same universe as the spider-man games mm -hmm. maybe it is maybe it's not we don't know yet we have marvel alliance 3 that came out on switch like i think four years ago yeah. that was actually a pretty good game you know then the Avengers drops, and that's a complete shit show. Yep, it's really always awesome. been all over the place. That's fair. And so I don't think I don't think that Marvel really cared. It's not a quality thing for them. I don't mm -hmm. think. I don't think they want you dropping absolute shit. <laughs> like I'm sure when Avengers dropped, they're like, "Come on, right, right, come on." <laughs> But at the same time, like, I don't think they're afraid to let the developers and the writers of these games like, kind of take control of the lore because yeah. they know that every they know consumers are smart enough to understand that none of these games affect the MCU. Right. The right. MCU is its own thing. People have their view, whether it's doing well or not doing well. At the end of the day, it's its own separate thing. And I don't think the video games really come into place. Right. And I think Spider-Man kind of proved that. Because Spider-Man, for lore purposes, if you're trying to relate it to the MCU, doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. But it's it sold well, and people world. understand that it's different. Yeah. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. I just disagreed a little bit about... You're making a lot of sense, yeah. Thomas. You're making a lot of sense. I try. I try. <laughs> you know who's also trying to make a lot of sense? <laughs> <laughs> London <laughs> authorities. Oh, who, no. <laughs> who have arrested a 17-year-old from... Oxfordshire Thursday evening. What'd he do? What'd he, he do? do? Yeah. He might have stolen a couple of documents from a couple of important companies that I can list. But since we're a video game podcast, he stole from Rockstar. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Get the, the Duke, get the Duke <laughs> of Lawyers on to defend I'm ourselves. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yes, he leaked a bit of stuff that we did not think we were going to be privy to in regards to Grand Theft Auto 6, the yeah. aforementioned game that we've been waiting 
a very long time for. The last release came out on PlayStation 3. 3? Jesus. <laughs> so it's been a while. But he leaked that. We talked about that last week. We talked about what these leaks entailed. And Just how wanted awesome to give an looked. update on this. Alfredo, how are you feeling about this man yeah. behind bars? I mean, so yeah, just not behind, bit, not behind bars, but all right. Yeah, right. We don't know uh, the situation might be on bail or something. Right. Just give a little bit more information. So they basically the author, the authorities who arrested him. Basically, we've been given very little information. We know that he's 17 year old. We know that he is very likely a part of a a larger hacker group called I think what are they lapses? Called? I think yes, lapses. I believe I think yeah, something like, a like that. Boy. I think that is a Pokemon. <laughs> it might be. I it think it's Pokemon. It so it's like the it. one with. It's the one that's like almost like a whale. They're oh, like... I know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of the Pokemon group, <laughs> the po- <laughs> and and all other than that, we know that that group has taken responsibility for that as well as the recent Uber leak. Mm-hmm. So they're basically trying to tie that group and this pers- individual who they arrested to both of those recent crimes. Now. I am. I mean, obviously, it is a crime to literally steal, not only steal data from companies, but also to try to blackmail them, which is exactly what happened. <laughs> they said, hey, we have more things that we are going to possibly leak if you don't cooperate with us or give us money, basically, is what they were trying to give the impression of. We, you know, we'll leak it. We'll leak whatever we had. And they already leaked so much, right? Because everybody mm-hmm. knows about it right now. It's on YouTube. It's on every site. It's all over the internet. We've all seen it. Um, and, I mean, as far as my feelings, it it makes sense. I mean, I am surprised that they were actually able to arrest somebody. But now that they have arrested somebody, I'm more kind of thinking along the lines of, oh, God, they are going to make an example <laughs> out of this individual who they actually have caught. Rockstar, they will try their best to make an example of, you know, don't do this because you might get X amount of years in prison, all of that. You won't just get a, a slap on the hand, basically, on the wrist. So I have a couple words for that. Um, in regards to your last point, I think that Rockstar can't, like, demand a jail sentence. Mm-hmm. So anything that Rockstar does would have to be civilly. Yeah, I mean, I think that... What's like, I think happen- that's where it's going to hurt. I don't think it's going to be like, oh, you're going to jail for a while. That's all on... I don't know London's laws. Well, like- I think their team of lawyers will be like... Will basically make it so that they have all the evidence and, like, have all the stuff and say, oh, they have this, 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 which, you know, they would do anyway. But I think that they will try I think it might be whatever the connections they have. I think it's going to be Oh, really? I think they might employ this man. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> that's you how this so? works, right? Like usually, if he was able to do all that, mm-hmm. wouldn't it make more sense to just say, "Yo, we're gonna give you a check. Tell but- us exactly <laughs> what you did, uh-huh. so we can backdoor this, but he was- and not have this not ever be a thing again." Because obviously, you are sense. a very talented individual mm-hmm. to have been able at 17 years old yeah, that's to thing. hack into because it, it, it has to have been so many attempts before people trying to hack into them right right like there's been plenty of people trying to see what gta 6 looks like and he did it. and he did it so I, I honestly don't think he's going to be in trouble trouble like that's that's interesting that's interesting. I'm I'm also thinking about it though because because um, he has other know, companies in line to do the same thing to him, right? So he that's, might need and he might need this. Like, I'm not saying maybe it won't be Rockstar, but he's gonna need one of these companies to basically pay for his legal fees mm. because he's gonna be facing this from Uber as well, probably. Mm-hmm. So sure. I'm assuming this. I don't think he's gonna be in trouble, trouble because I don't think he. I don't think he's gonna be riding in a prison cell. Mm-hmm. He might get some time. I think he is going to get paid to do this for now. Interesting. And they, they already, have done that He's already before. been being paid. He's a millionaire. He's already being yeah. paid to do this illegally. 
Right. So it's like, I think that they might employ him. It's possible. I mean, I'm not saying it's like impossible he goes to jail for a while. I just don't think it's going to happen. Now, here's my thinking, because I'm using the little, bad, the very, very, very little information I have mm-hmm. from playing games like Watch Dogs. <laughs> and uh, Watch Dogs <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Which obviously, you know, is all about hacking companies, sticking right. it to the man. But okay. one of the, <laughs> one, stick with me here. This This person is a part of, a hacker group, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of a part of DeadSec, which is like the, the hacker group yes, equivalent in Watch Dogs. <laughs> so he's a part of DeadSec, it. essentially. Now, one, from what I know about these hacker groups, they are all about, you know, sticking it to the man and anti-corporate, all of giving it to the people, kind of, kind of that vibe. So, like, would you think that, obviously, he... He did. They pegged him as you know him being responsible for this, but I don't know how many of his you know his hacker group. Maybe somebody else in his the hacker group did it. Maybe they collaborated. I don't know how it works. Honestly, I don't know. But I'm more stuck on the sticking it to the man part. Will would they actually be like, oh yeah, I'll take the all this money from this corporation and actually help them as well? Versus no, screw you. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. It, it depends on the person for sure, but it's one thing when you are you know, not under investigation of anything. It's a whole nother thing. If you are under investigation, you are not in front of a computer. Yeah. And facing and charges. And facing charges. charges. So I can't speak to what that person's going to do. There are people with that mindset and, you know that it's possible he's one of them. Mm-hmm. I would say if he was offered the money and he has a lot of legal fees he has to take care of, he's probably going to take that money. That's Because I don't think he's able to out. access any of the money he got from stealing from other companies. You if I know the law, if I know the law, if I know the law, well, if you are accused of like stealing like digital stuff, and you have a whole bunch of money that hasn't been reported and you're 17 years old, I don't think you can have access to this million dollars that you, millions of mm. dollars that you've taken. I don't think you can. Okay, I see. I see. But it's one I thing if let's say a rich much. person like commits a crime, that rich mm-hmm. person can still use their money. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. if you got your money from illegitimate gains, I don't think you can just use that money for court. I don't. I wouldn't put it past them. They're a hacker. They know how to do, you know, but they're not from offshore a computer accounts. where they're arrested. <laughs> they are, but I don't know how arresting goes, honestly. <laughs> are you are you just well he could well, be, that's you know, true. But he it's could London. be on mail. It's London. It's London. Yeah, I don't, I don't know their mail. laws. He might be on house arrest right now. Right now, don't, we don't know. But we can say for certainty if he does have access to a computer, then all bets are off. Because that's what they do The best. first thing I would take away from him <laughs> if I were arresting him would be any type of computer. <laughs> any computer. His phone, any, anything. Don't give that man a calculator. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, wow, yeah. It'll be interesting seeing, you know, what information they do actually release because they are playing it very, very, very close to their chest right now. They're not trying to release much information about this. Well, good for them. Well, hopefully they can recover and really get back in the swing of developing this game because from what we saw last week it looked great um to all the stupid people that say oh game development starts from the from the graphics first and it looks horrible so that's what you can expect this game to look like it's like no (laughs) like game development is like building a house and you're not going to build half the house (laughs) <laughs> and it's like the like it literally oh, like absolutely. a half furnished house. And oh, we're gonna furnish, we're gonna build and furnish the other half. It's like uh, no, you build the foundation. <laughs> for, you build the foundation, <laughs> which is what we saw. That's what we yeah. saw. We saw the foundation, and I'll, and even foundation like, we saw looks some, good though. We saw foundation. some good textures too. Like it wasn't just blob. Like I've seen game development worse than that, where it's literally just blobs. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's definitely pretty far along and i feel like it's encouraging to see that if that is truly from 2019 and that's three years ago that game must be pretty far along in development that's an encouraging sign that means it's closer than even i thought it would be yeah so looking forward to it any final thoughts on the same 
same same thoughts as you i am very excited to see you know when we will voluntarily parent voluntarily here about yeah. yeah voluntarily hear about gta 6 directly from rockstar that will be a great day and i hope it comes sooner rather than later me as well and that will be a great day but unfortunately it was not a great day for the folks at G4, um, 20 to 30 of their employees have been laid off. They've lost staff and they've lost a lot of like on camera personalities as well. Those were included in the layoffs. Um, it's rumored that Adam Sessler is leaving as well. That's not fully confirmed, but there are reports out that he might be gone. Um, Kevin Pereira has been you know, let go as well. It's a sad story. Um, I've heard you have been following this as closely, right? No, definitely not. I do know that, you know, G4 obviously was a huge for a huge TV channel, basically, that was all about game centered entertainment, whether it was like Let's Plays, news, all of that being covered. Um, but as, and then, you know, obviously they shut down and they revived within the past year saying G4 is coming back. I haven't watched any of their content since they came back. So I'm not very familiar as to, you know, how they've been running their their new platform in this new streaming kind of landscape where everybody can stream. There's YouTube, there's Twitch, there's all these different opportunities. So definitely not as familiar with what's happening there right now. Yeah, I mean, so a lot's been going on. Their business strategy was very interesting from the jump where they essentially had the TV station come back. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the content would also be on Twitch and also would be on YouTube. And I think they're just coming back into a marketplace that is different than when they last left it. Um, mm -hmm. I think G4 was closed, I believe, like 2013. That sounds right, about right. Maybe somewhere in the 2010s, like early 2010s. Yeah. yeah. And so... At that point, YouTube was just getting, you know, it's shine. And now YouTube is a main staple. We're on YouTube. You know, there are a lot of content creators on YouTube. And I think it was a losing battle. They would do like X-Play. I don't know if you remember X-Play, which is like I their do. review. I used to love that as a kid, you know, but I don't think it works now in comparison to and look i don't even watch a lot of game reviews like that but unless i watch like i like acg i like stuff mm -hmm. like that i like things that are to the point occasionally funny but very to the point x play wasn't like that i compare it more to like an angry joe okay you know like i feel like yeah, he kind of took the mold of x play and just he's kind of doing that himself yeah. so and capture of that audience who likes that style right and and you can tell with him i'm not the biggest fan of his material i don't watch a, a lot of his videos but the ones i have seen you can tell there's a lot of production value and there's a lot of like planning out script writing and everything and the x play now the reviews i've watched it's they're more like youtube video essays okay with Adam Sessler just sitting in a chair, just talking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's cool, but don't call that X Play. I got you. You know, it's, it's not, not the same. It's not X Play. Saying. It's like you're using the brand to get more plays for this game review that's not the same as what it used to be. Now, yeah. do I think it's better from a like critical standpoint? Yeah, I think they are. Like, you could tell, like, they have a script for this and they're like, like, if X Play reviews were designed to be very short because mm -hmm. it's a TV show. Right. You can only review you I think yeah, four games to review in a 20 hour block. Wait, you mean 20 minutes? 20 minutes, thanks. Oh, I was like 20, 20 hours is a long time. <laughs> you know, no show is 20 hours, sorry. But yeah, 20 minute block for four games. Yeah, that's that's pretty quick. Yeah, but it's like and it wasn't depth. meant yeah, it wasn't meant to be substantial. Yeah. And this X play now is we're gonna take 14 minutes to review a game. And it's like, cool, that's not X play. I got you. Okay. And so a lot of the stuff was like that. Um, they got into, I don't think this is the main reason why, but they had this issue where one of the hosts had a very had a very aggressive rant. And the rant essentially ended with, if you don't like us, don't watch us. I did hear about that. I did. Because that was and, that was over news and everything. <laughs> yeah. And not to take a side on what, what, what she was saying, but the point is people listened. 
<laughs> well, yeah. Started not yeah. watching. You can't re- like you shouldn't really re- talk down to your audience. Well, I do remember that particular news um and how it was I guess controversial, but I believe it came about, correct me if I'm wrong, because mm-hmm. I wasn't following as much. Um, but I believe that came about because people started talking about or commenting about the way some of the female hosts were dressing. Is that correct? I thought it came about through something that way along something those like lines. That. And I think that they have a had a live stream, I believe. If I, remember, I might be getting this wrong. Sorry if I'm getting this wrong. But they had a live stream. And I think something it was along the lines of you're not as hot as Morgan Webb. Yeah. Who's one of the co who's one of the hosts of X play back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. And her rant essentially was like, Morgan Webb wasn't there to be easy on the eyes for you. Olivia Munn wasn't there to be easy on the eyes for you. Crazy. And I will sit and and I have to sit here and just be honest. That wasn't their I I wouldn't say that's their primary reason for being on the show. But if you tell me that's not a factor. (laughs) (laughs) You you lost me. You lost me. (laughs) We can argue about what the percentage was of the, what was in their job description. Mm-hmm. I do think they were both very, I like Morgan Reb because she was very funny, mm-hmm. you know? So I got value out of her with that, besides like how she looked. Yeah. Like she was, I think a genuinely good host. Yeah. I didn't really watch attack of the show. So I don't really know Olivia Munn like that. So I can't speak to her, but Morgan Webb, I thought was a pretty good host, but she did pose in Maxim, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, there is an element of, She's a celebrity female that poses in magazines. Obviously, like there is an element of why G four would want her on the show. Like to act act like that's not a thing is not real. Maybe not not handled in the best way, like you said. (laughs) Yeah, and so and I just don't think I think that if this were if they were doing successful and that happened, then it would be blown under the bridge, like. Okay, she right. said these comments. People, you know, were mad about it. Left, whatever. They're still making good content, but they're but just they're, starting or re- trying to revive and build their base. And what this sh- also the like what I read this story. My first thought was they laid off thirty staff. I thought thirty staff worked on this <laughs> channel. <laughs> like that's what I thought. How many people? How many people are working here? Two hundred. They, oh, wow. they and okay. they and they're paying apparently they I, I was reading on Reddit because somebody got laid off. They paid for people to go to Cali. So they're also paying room like room and board in some cases. Oh wow. For people to travel. They were taking wow, YouTubers, they they had a whole bunch of on-screen talent. They were YouTubers who still did their YouTube channels. Like one mm-hmm. person I used to watch a lot is the um the completionist. Oh, cool. So he That's had awesome. his, he was on G4. But the problem is, like, if you're going to do that, and obviously it's probably impossible. It would cost yeah. a lot of money. But you got to say, yes, I have a YouTube channel. Right. This right. Is a, you're an active competitor to us. Yeah. And you're on our yeah, show. And, Interesting uh, business model, huh? Right. And so they'd have, like, their creators do a version of their show for TV. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's cool. But it's the show that I watch on YouTube. Like, just it being on TV is not special. <laughs> but it's on cable thomas but there was a uh you heard of scott the waz uh no actually i haven't I, honestly i feel like you should watch it what if his like i i don't like his humor that much but i think he i think you might like his humor it's very like it's like the most nerdy thing i've ever seen but it's so uh, thanks i no, 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 guess in, in, ter- <laughs> in terms of it's the, in terms of like it's like kingdom hearts nerdy uh again thanks <laughs> yeah it's like it's i feel like it's it'd be right up your because i feel i i get a giggle out of it you know because mm. some but some of the stuff is like super specific i'm like, i don't know if i'd like this but he's I really got it, I got it. he's pretty funny i got it he's okay pretty, i'll, I'll and i don't think it works on like cable they give him like an hour long show mass on. appeal right i got you right it, it's fun like, he's a like he's a funny dude he doesn't work on cable and that's a lot of these personalities it's almost like they tried to just pay their way into success by getting a whole bunch of youtube people getting a whole bunch of streamers and their identity was kind of lost too like they're having this like pro 
pro woman rant at one point, and then they have a streamer like basically in her bra and panties, like getting sprayed on it. <laughs> well, I didn't know about that. <laughs> so it's like it's like you're trying to it's like you're trying to play like it's, it's like they did not Level have size. a plan. Yeah. They did not have a plan for any. It's almost like the Star Wars trilogy of the new. Oh movies, no! Where it's like they said, we're just gonna make we're gonna make movies. Anything. What's the plan though? <laughs> we'll figure that out. They're, it's almost like it feels like G four. They're they're in space. That's the plan. And sometimes they're not. And G four, they're like, we're gonna make a TV, a Twitch, and a YouTube. Cool. How many how many employees think we need? How many did we have back when G four was first open? Not through two hundred. All right, let's do two hundred. <laughs> Where's the money going to come from? It will just come. <laughs> I mean, I, w- I will. <laughs> when you put it like that, I will say that I didn't think it was a bad idea considering, you know, gaming is one of the most profitable industries, period, in like in the world. And like, I'm not going to complain if, the, if there's a G4 TV like experience on TV. But like you said, there's so much competition now. So what you do have to have some sort of solid plan and just writing on the coattails of what GA4 used to be maybe won't work out for you. But I feel like they could I feel like they could pull a cyberpunk 2077, Thomas, where, you know, they write they come out. It's not as great as what they wanted, but like give it a couple of years and they can get there. But they have to have some sort of plan, I guess. That is better than what they've been doing so far. Because, like, even, like, me, somebody who was plugged into gaming, like, I didn't know where to find their content, where to go, where they're available, stuff like that. So, you know, I feel like they just need a little bit of a revamp, a reboot, a DLC, if you were. Well, a reboot, reboot. (laughs) Something. They need to figure it out. I think they had like they had a shot. I'm happy they rolled the dice and tried it out, you know. But I, I, you, I've said it before. I'm not of the belief that everything needs to be brought back. It's not. Yep. And this is one of those things. G4 was made at a time where we really didn't have like Twitch and YouTube as active. Uh, Twitch yep. wasn't even made, but YouTube wasn't even like what it is now. Like people weren't just doing like video game essays like out the wazoo. Now they're yeah. if you type a video game in, you'll immediately get some review from some kid from Iowa. <laughs> and he might do a really good job, you know? YouTube now is just completely different. So they couldn't compete there. Twitch is a like you gotta be like that has to be a grind. Yeah. You know? And it's it, they weren't succeeding on that. I didn't look at their live TV numbers, but I, I can only assume. Right, right. So it's just like, I feel maybe they should reduce it down to maybe a YouTube channel, employ like five people, mm-hmm. and just let that be its thing. Because I don't think it needs to die. I just think that it needs it. Like, the like I don't want to know how much money was invested to make all this happen. <laughs> I kind of do. Like they had I'm an just office. Curious. They had an office, Alfredo. They had two hundred people on staff. That is a lot of people that I would expect. But I mean, I guess that makes sense because if you're creating all that, you need like video editors. You need the camera if you, crew. You need Alfredo, the if you, talent, Alfredo, go to that. the YouTube channel, bro. It's it, if you. I do want you to watch some of the videos, <laughs> and I want you to tell me, yeah, this needs two hundred people. <laughs> do they not have all of that. <laughs> It's I'll just, I'll go on their I'll go on their sites. I'll do some research for next show. Yeah, just do to some see research. what they it's, have available. It's it's interesting. It's, it's such an interesting story. We can go on and on about it, but overall, I I hope that I wish all the people well who got laid off. You know, mm-hmm. getting laid off always sucks. Been there, right. so hopefully, you know, they you know get a really good severance package. Hopefully, they can get up on their feet and find a better opportunity because I think that G4 is not going to be picking up those people anytime soon. Fingers crossed. You never know. They can pull a No Man's Sky. They are not a video game, Alfredo. (laughs) (laughs) It could be big one day. (sighs) They are not a video game, but we are a podcast. And I want to thank everybody for listening or watching the Dukes of Gaming podcast. Again, you can listen to us on your favorite podcast service. Watch us live on Twitch as well. Leave a like, a review, a comment, anything to help support the show. You can even email us at the real dukes of gaming at gmail.com. Have your question read live on air. Make sure you start your week right 
with the Dukes of Gaming. And with all that being said, I bid thee farewell.